Well, hello there! It's Greggy Soriano, and today I'm going to show you guys some buttercream piping techniques and tips on how to pipe with just one tip. We're only going to be using a number one tip, and if you've ever cake decorated before, it's a tiny itty bitty hole on a tip. And you're going to be thinking to yourself, Greggy, like how did you manage to do all of those designs with just one tip? And I'm going to show you all these tips, pun intended, and tricks right here today on Greggy's Digest. Let's get started. Right here, I have a piping bag filled with buttercream. And right now, I am showing you how to take out the air bubbles so you don't have little toots in the middle of your piping session. And right here, I am twisting it. And that's, um, you should get the habit of twisting it and guiding it with your pointer finger. So twist and guide with your pointer finger. And you always want to just get into the habit of doing this because guiding it with your finger gives you some stability and you want to be very stable to create the most beautiful piping you've ever done on the entire planet. One big cake decorating no-no is to overfill your bag with buttercream and just try to avoid doing that and you'll be good to go or else you'll be a big hot mess and you're going to have buttercream everywhere and it's just not going to be cute. Right now I'm showing you how to pipe a bead border and this is a mini bead border, and I'm doing pressure, pull, pressure, pull. And each little bead is actually separate. You're not continuously doing it so that they're connected. I am separating each little bead. And right now, I just showed you that you must clean off your piping tip as you're going, because if you just leave it on that little glunk, of glunk glob blob of buttercream onto your piping tip it's totally going to affect the shape of how your buttercream comes out and you want beautiful beads to come out or little teardrops to come out so um, always 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 clean your piping tips right here is a herringbone pattern and you just want to create a mantra and a rhythm in your head so Pressure, pull, pressure, pull, pressure, pull. And I, I just love the herringbone. I pretty much do the herringbone pattern everywhere on a lot of my cakes. And right now I'm doing a fleur-de-lis pattern. And you just make a tadpole in the center and tadpoles on both sides. So pressure, pull, pressure, pull, and a little dot. Pressure, pull, pressure, pull, pressure, pull pull and a little dot right here's a little bit more advanced and I'm doing a triple herring bone and it's super easy you could totally do it and basically you're doing a Florida de lis but many in close together and make sure they're separate and take your time and that finger is really guiding it and giving you stability so make sure you're guiding with your finger With just this one little tip, you can create different size tips without having to change it. So basically with the pressure, you're eliminating number two, number three, four, five, six, seven, eight tips um, without having to change it, which is amazing. And what's awesome about it is that it comes out more beautiful when you use a tinier tip because it comes out with more round and has a lot more shape to it. And right here, I'm creating some balls or beads or pearls and it sounds crazy easy because you're just making a dot but actually you want to take your time and you have to get a feel of the pressure as you lift up slowly and you want to create that round ball shape 
and it sounds easy but it's kind of a little bit difficult and it's weird because the easy things or the easy fit sounding things are actually a lot more difficult than it seems but it just um practice makes perfect and right here i'm making more tadpoles and it's good to practice going in different directions and i'm actually doing this upside down because the camera is the other way um, and it's good to practice doing it all different types of directions and upside down and, you know, um, to the left, to the right, and give it some movement. And right here I'm adding more tadpole shapes that are connected to the actual huge tadpole shape. So basically I'm doing a mini bead border on each tadpole. So that's another variation. And... You want to create a gradient effect with these dots. So I'm doing five because odd numbers are good. I usually do them in five, threes, or ones because visually it's more appealing when you use odd numbers. Right now we're doing a pretty buttercream swirl pattern and this is the go-to pattern when it comes to making beautiful wedding cakes and it's really good to have this embedded in your head and to pretty much know the formula on how to create these swirls and how to create the pattern in general because once you do that you can make a wedding cake in like literally in minutes. The key to this is to know your spacing and to create a little bit more of a thicker tadpole um, end to each swirl and to make sure they're thinner and more finer towards the center and also to create lots of movement in different directions. So it looks a lot more visually appealing if the swirls go on opposite directions and you really want to strategically think about where you place every single thing. You don't want to crowd them too much. Um, you want to just make sure you create some movement to it. And you don't have to um, pre-plan it. Just avoid um, pre-planning it and avoid thinking about it too much. You want it to organically flow. You don't have to trace it out with a toothpick or anything. You just want to create the habit of thinking about the spacing and strategically placing them in organic spots and and thinking of the movement and the different directions. So right now I'm thinking in my head, okay, like maybe this scroll should go the other way or that scroll should go the, the this way and, you know, the little tadpole should go inside there because, you know, it just, it just works out organically. Don't think about it too much or pre-plan it because that's when it looks too cookie cutter um and if you notice inside where the little tadpole is on the scroll where it's thicker i love it when it's like a little bit more inset and it's like indented i don't know if you see that but sometimes it, it it's a little indented where the little tadpole is which i love it just creates more texture and it kind of looks painted on a bit and just pipe your heart out and practice, practice, practice. I usually like to pipe this on with royal icing onto fondant cakes because the royal icing sets up and you could easily paint it with some vodka and pearl dust or vodka and gold dust. And you can paint it any color you want. You can even paint it with... Um, gel paste and um, it looks gorgeous at the end. Uh, it gives that Baroque type of feel or Victorian feel and I just I'm obsessed with this pattern and I've been doing it for many years. I've been cake decorating for over 12 years and I, I've been doing this since the beginning and I just I love this type of pattern. Right here we're doing a different variation of a scroll. So I made like an S shape or a treble clef shape and I did a mini bead border on it with a little tadpole at the end. 
or we can do our classic swirly and add a bead border a mini bead border inside the middle of it and you could also do little tails like this and add little accents of gradient dots in different sizes and odd numbers around them and more tadpole shapes and um, this is just practicing your spacing and breather space um, you always want to make sure you have breather space whenever you're placing any type of embellishment onto a cake and there you have it different types of variations on how to pipe buttercream with a number one tip Thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe if you like this video and also sign up for my monthly cakers crate at greggysoriano.com. Bye! Click on the cute little bumblebee to subscribe. Click on the video to view my last episode on the right and visit my website at www.greggysoriano.com. Oh, and follow me on social media in the description links down below. Thanks!